iOS 18.2 is Apple's biggest new Apple intelligence update. It's packed with a bunch of new features. We have Genmoji, Image Playground, Apple intelligence is improving, the writing tools again, emojis are getting better. There's so much to cover. And in this video, I'd like to show you the best 18 new features now introduced in iOS 18.2. Okay, so let's start with number one, and that is within the Photos app. So Apple is updating the Photos app more and more, and it looks like we're getting a little bit back to the old design and i believe a lot of people are really happy with that so if we go to the photos app we can now see that a video is playing in full screen compared to where we had to press it in iOS 18.1 to zoom in. You can now see it immediately plays in full screen. Also, we get in the bottom here this scroll tab to get to other photos and videos. And also a nice addition here is that we get the milliseconds when we scroll. This was not in iOS 18.1 and now you can see the milliseconds when you scroll. Number two is that the image image playground app has been added and is now functional and let's have a look at the new app so for example you have suggestions here you can click on show more you can see there are a lot of themes that you can use costumes accessories so let's go with a beanie add a disco and then image playground you're going to make that and then you can scroll through the different suggestions and see how you like it and what you can also do is take your own portrait and add that and then you can see that's me with these suggestions we just had you can also describe an image so say a birthday in space add that how crazy is this that it's taking into account all these variables and then make these images really fun to play with I'm not sure if many people are going to use this maybe in the beginning then later on people won't use it that much anymore but yeah when you have you just click done and then you have this image that you can then save to your photos and, and there it is our new image playground creation number three and i was actually really excited to try this out but unfortunately couldn't and that is that when you're going to charge your iphone so let's charge it you will have a screen indicating how much time is still needed in order to fully charge your iPhone. That will then be displayed on the lock screen and even possibly in the dynamic island. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to reproduce this. So I found an image and uh, something that indicates how that can look from beta profiles. And yet it was actually found by 9to5Mac. And as you can see, it's showing how much time is left until your iPhone is fully charged. I really need a feature if you ask me. Then number four has to do with emojis. I mean, we're all massive fan of emojis and especially if we have the flexibility and customization possibilities to create anything we want and that is introduced with Genmoji. So if you go to, for example, the messaging app, click on the emojis in the bottom left, you have this new button here on the right, which is the Genmoji button. And then it's a bit similar to what we had with the image playground feature. You now describe any emoji you want. So let's say, for example, we want a avo avocado with a heart and glasses let's see if it's going to be able to create this oh well that's actually pretty good and then you get the suggestions the ones that you want and then there are no limitations anymore and this is also great for example for christmas or any theme you want to have in your emoji so let's say for example we want a red white christmas tree let's see what we get here and check this out the suggestions are pretty good actually keep scrolling until you have something that you're happy with uh, so let's say we want this one and boom immediately it has created this emoji and you can also see it's going to be added to your emoji list you can use this anywhere you want messages notes but unfortunately it's still limited to other apps for example whatsapp i know it's limited and instagram as well but i think it's just a matter of time until we'll be able to use these create self-created emojis into other apps as well number five is visual intelligence so actually i believe this was the main feature why camera control was introduced. Apple initially promoted camera control as the go-to camera button to immediately open the camera and then control it and then have anything you want, change the settings right from this button. But I think initially the goal of camera control was to be able to use it with visual intelligence. So with visual intelligence, you need to long press camera control and then after a brief period, it automatically opens this 
camera screen. And now if I take a picture of, go with this iPhone 16 Pro box, just like that. They have this little sound effect. You now can actually search it on Google and even use ChatGPT with it. You can ask ChatGPT, for example, um, uh, what do you see? And it's saying a smartphone package, pretty accurate. And now let's see what happens when we ask Google about this image, click on the search button. And then you see it's searching with Google and it's going to show images related to what you had on Google. Also, I believe that right now there's only Google and ChatGPT support, but Gemini, so Google's AI will be available later on. And maybe also other AI services will be able to get access to this. This was the reason why camera control Control was introduced mostly for visual intelligence. Next up has to do with volume and now we get the adjusted uh, volume line back that we had in the past so let me show you how that looks. If you play any music or anything on your iPhone you have the possibility to change it straight from your lock screen. Pretty nice and a bit more accurate huh, than if you use the buttons on the side. To enable this you need to go to settings and in settings we scroll to accessibility and in accessibility we need to go to audio visual right there and now we have this section here always show a volume control so this was toggled on and showed now it's gone if I toggle it off if I toggle it on it should be there you can see the volume control slider number seven has to do with air tags so introduced in iOS 18.2 you can now actually share your air tag with a airline or a trusted person so if we go to find my you can see you can now share your items location and this is exactly how that looks you can share your item location with a trusted person or even an airline and then the person who opens the link will be able to see the location of your air tag for a limited time what happens is they basically will have a link a url where they can go to and then they can track the item and you have full control over this link so you can turn off the tracking of an air tag whenever you want you can put a specific timer on this it's pretty controlled and secure obviously we're talking here about privacy and location so there's a lot of control on this feature and i think this is really amazing for people that are losing their luggage that are traveling even now with the feature that airlines have the possibility to track your luggage for example this was just what we've been waiting for for years next up it's finally here and number eight is that chat gpt is integrated into siri on the iphone so let's say for example give me a flourless pancake recipe and there you see it it's working with chat gpt siri wasn't able to complete this prompt but luckily chat gpt was i think the possibilities of this integration are absolutely endless you can go in any direction you want you can even use chat gpt for example to write emails for you or write any text a lot more on that later that's basically number nine so number nine for example let's go into messages and then let's say i want to have have a poem written to somebody I can just ask ChatGPT to do that you need to evoke ChatGPT in this so if you don't mention it it's not going to work so for example I say ask ChatGPT to write me a poem about Apple there you go it's running it's composing and bomb just like that we have our <laughs> amazing uh, poem here using the power of Siri and ChatGPT. Also, what's really cool is that you can also do this inside the notes app. So for example, give me a list of some of the best restaurants in Cupertino. Again, we need to ask ChatGPT to run this for us. And there we go. I mean, how amazing is that? And number 10 has to do with the writing tools. So they have significantly been increased and improved in iOS 18.2. So let's, for example, say I want to select this text and go to writing tools we now have other options here we have the different ways of tonality f friendly professional and concise but also summary key points list and table and for example one of my favorite one is the table one and we've selected here different restaurant options if we hit table it's going to scan the whole text and make a table and even decide what are the main subjects the main themes on top so restaurant cuisine notes anything special and you can do this with 
with very long lists and items and it automatically recognizes what needs to be put in the subject and I think that's really really amazing still we're talking about ChatGPT here but now if we go into settings and we scroll to Apple intelligence and Siri then we go to ChatGPT we can actually see that we can sign in with our own ChatGPT and ChatGPT plus account but you can see that there is a daily limit right now so you have access to the advanced capabilities of ChatGPT I think it's ChatGPT for something and when you surpass this daily limit you will get the basic version which I believe is still amazingly good you can now see that into the ChatGPT extension next let's talk about camera control because there are some nice little updates to that as well if we go to camera right there and then go to camera control we now have this accessibility feature here as you can see there are a bunch of new customization tools in order for you to change your camera control experience so for example the double click speed you can go from default slow to slower double light press speed same thing the light press force you want it to be firmer or lighter and then the control gestures the light press and the swipe you can basically change this to your own preference and then number 13 still about camera control if we go to display and brightness then scroll down we have the new uh, require screen on feature for the camera control which basically means if you want to enable camera control the screen needs to be on so let's say my iPhone is turned on and I press on camera control eh, it's not going to open immediately but let's say I have this toggled off then if my iPhone is off it's going to open it immediately just like that and number 14 has to do with safari now if we download anything from safari we can actually track the download on our lock screen and in our dynamic island let's for example download something from apple here go to the 45 app winner so let's say we want to download this it's going to download it just like we normally have but now if i go to the lock screen you can see we see the progress and at the same time it's being showed in the dynamic island really nice little feature i think many of us will find really helpful to track our downloads and a number 15 has to do with the mail app now you have the possibility to categorize your emails so how does this look when you open the mail app so unfortunately i don't have it right now yet but let me show you how that looks for example if you open the mail app you have this new primary section mail categories are now made so find the messages that matter most in primary and organize everything else so apple is going to suggest which emails have your highest priority and next up you can also see for example emails that are related to receipts orders and deliveries so that's the transaction section and then we have updates and the last one is notification so apple made these categories i'm really curious to see how this works out over the long run but yeah really nice to have these categories and see if it's going to help us save time next up is in settings so if we go to the bottom and we go to apps we now get this new default app section so what this means is now we have a better overview of all the default apps that are using which service so right now for example email you can only use mail but this could mean that actually other providers will have the possibility to be default apps as well as with messages i don't know if this has anything to do with the european union forcing apple to open up their ecosystem but yeah as you can see there's now in app this default app section which allows you to potentially in the future change the default apps for example for the mail phone or messages app number 17 talking about default uh, messaging apps so let's say for example we go to messages you can now see that there is this section default messaging app that has been added so this means that in the future potentially again messages could be opened up and you can for example use whatsapp or messenger or telegram to straight message someone so not use messages from apple anymore pretty interesting feature really curious to know how this will play out in the future
And lastly, still in the default apps here, let's go to Safari because now there's a new warning. There's a new not secure connection warning. So let's scroll to Safari. And if we scroll down, there is this new section called a not secure connection warning. Let's toggle this on. And what this actually does is that you basically get a warning when you're loading or connecting to a website that Apple thinks is not secure. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful make sure to subscribe hit the bell icon like this video if you learned something new appreciate you being here and see you in the next one Peace.